Hi, I'm Russ Mayfield, Investment Strategy Analyst at Baird, and we are back for another weekly update with our friends at Strategus. Today, I'm thrilled to be joined by Chris Ferrone. Chris is a partner at Strategus and heads up the firm's technical and macro research product. Chris, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me as always, Ross. Yeah, great to talk to you. Um, let's start here with this uh, small cap rally. Uh, you know, the story yeah. of the last several months has been a narrow market leadership profile, big tech and not much else. And then over the last, call it a week or so, maybe a little bit less, small caps have been ascendant, um, you know, ticking yeah. some historical boxes. So what is it? what is it saying about the market? And does it have legs sure. in your opinion? Well, I think it's certainly significant, and I want to really approach it from two perspectives. Uh, the first is a old saying a mentor of mine used to always tell me, Chris, in bull markets, be patient, not clever. And when you think about small caps in that regard, remember all the excitement back in December and January when you saw all that breath expansion, you saw the trend really start to accelerate, and then they effectively spent the last four or five months consolidating, along with you know big chunks of the market, whether it be industrials or financials, their only crime was consolidating the last four or five months. Be patient, not clever. You got that spark of momentum uh, last week, and I think it continues to reiterate that when you're in a bull market, you play by bull market rules. So we were anticipatory and expecting the broadening uh, of this tape, and I think the small caps and the financials and the industrials uh, certainly reflect that here. That's part one of the story. I think part two of the story is the impact of lower bond yields. Uh, we are strongly in the camp that, that bond yields have peaked here for the cycle. I think you particularly see it on the short end. Lower short rates, historically better for small caps. I think that's part of the, uh, I think that's a big part of the story as well. Yeah, I agree. And let's let's stick with that that bread theme. Uh, you pointed to the financials. The banks mm -hmm. have been relative outperformers here. Um, and you've used two historical corollaries, or at least that I've seen in your writing. And I wonder if you could touch on each of them and maybe discuss how they're in conjunction with each other, 2016 and then yeah. 1995, um, the last quote-unquote soft point. landing. Yeah, sure, Ross. I, I think it's a great point. I, I think there are really kind of three things driving financials right now. The first we mentioned is rates. Uh, steeper curve, lower bond yields is supportive, particularly for regional banks. Uh, I think second, you know, a, a big call for us basically since the debate a few weeks ago was, you know, the likelihood of a Trump win is growing, the Trump trade will be pulled forward. And what we learned from that in you know, November, December of 16 is how bullish it was for financials, for banks in particular, capital markets, consumer finance. So that has really been catalyzed here. And then I think there's the broader macro backdrop, which is the market continuing to justify this soft landing narrative. And you go back and kind of re-examine historically what sectors did well or didn't do well in the 94, 95, 96 soft landing environment, the big takeaway is financials were a massive winner during that period. So, you know, it's a combination of the macro, I think a combination of the policy backdrop, uh, as well as lower bond yields. Interestingly, in that 95 example, when the Fed began to cut in July of 95, the sector that actually struggled was technology. You had about a 20, 25% relative performance correction in tech. Um, as the Fed began to lower rates, I believe in July of 95. That lasted, that period of relative underperformance lasted until about the first quarter of 96. So just be aware of that historical dynamic. I do think it's important right now. Yeah, absolutely. There's, there's a, a, a lot of money chasing tech right now. And I think people would be pretty surprised to hear uh, that it was a relative underperformer right at the cusp of that big, you know, kind of bull market uh, run in the late 90s. Let's yeah. shift to... Uh, well, final question here, gold, you, you've been talking about gold for a while. It's it's consolidated a bit, but I, I think you still remain somewhat bullish on it. Talk about where you think it heads from here and maybe what message yeah. it's sending uh, with that move. So it's funny, you know, in, in this business, what we've always seen is that your best ideas tend to get to and exceed your target much faster or much quicker than you thought was possible. Uh, we entered the year with a 2,400 target on gold that felt ambitious at the time. We've clearly gotten there quickly. We've raised that target to 2,800. Uh, again, all we've seen from gold the last really eight, eight, 10 weeks is a benign consolidation. I think this uh, impulse lower or this move lower in bond yields is supportive for the metal. I also think it's important that the gold equities are now starting to get involved here as well. That's a change from what we've seen 
uh, in this gold bull market um, uh, of the last several years. You now have the stocks uh, working as well. And I think ultimately something like 2800 is is not uh, out of the question, certainly supported by bond yields down. Absolutely. Well, Chris, thank you so much for the time. As always, really insightful. And we'll look forward to talking to you again soon. Thanks, Russ.